the hymn I'm singing this morning is Benid Yeles Todos, and it's, the tune is very recognizable to everybody. Benid Yeles Todos, a Belén marchemos de gozo triunfantes y llenos de amor. A Rey de los cielos, humilde veremos. Venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos a Cristo el Señor, el que es Hijo eterno, del eterno Padre y Dios verdadero que al mundo creó. El sano virgeno nació de una madre. Venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos a Cristo el Señor. En pobre pesebre ya reclina ya reclinado al mundo ofreciendo eterna salvación. El santo mensaje, el verbo humanado, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos a Cristo el Señor. Cantad jubilosa, celestial criatura, se suen en los cielos con vuestra canción. Al Dios bondadoso, gloria en las alturas, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos. Mos a Cristo el Señor, Jesús, celebramos tu bendito nombre con y nos alegres de grato. Por siglos eternos la humanidad te honre, honre. Venid, adoremos, venid, adoremos. Venid, adoremos a Cristo el Señor. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we are offered the opportunity to come and adore you. Come as we are, though heavy burden we may be, though joyful we may be, though downcast we may be, we come as we are to adore you. And in that adoration, O oh God, we will find that what you offer us is far more than any trouble that we may be in or any circumstance we find ourselves entangled with. When we come and adore you, you will do the rest for us. We are thankful, O oh God, that we've come to this hour where we can gather around your word. We ask, Father, that you would hide me behind your dear cross. And these, your people, those who come to adore you, will hear what you desire for all of us to hear in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. Our scripture lesson comes from uh, the New Testament lectionary uh, scripture that was read, part of it, uh, in the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, verse two and three, we will hover around those two uh, verses. Uh, and it's very familiar uh, scripture here as we look at the second week, uh, second week of Advent. 
uh, in terms of preparation, in terms of preparation. Uh, and this is taken from the new international version of our Bible. Uh, it is written as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. For just a few more moments, we want to share uh, words around this thought with you. It is uh, a good cry, a good cry. Say that with me, a good cry. Mm. How about if we say it, a good cry? Yes, a good cry uh, as such. Um, we have so many things that we are instructed to do mm -hmm. from the word of God. And we have so many examples on how God's children ought to communicate, ought to respond to what God is doing in God's world. Uh, we have an obligation to lead all of God's creation in that response. Uh, we are studying the book, studying the book, um, all the earth is waiting. And it's written by uh, Katie uh, Dawson. And our Silver Feathers on Thursdays, we discussed this book and we're in the second week of it. And, and, and she connects the advent uh, with an emphasis on all of God's creation. Okay. And, and, and what we as humanity ought to do in terms of care for God's commute, uh, creation, as well as for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And certainly when we think about the condition that this world is in, mm -hmm. uh, from a human standpoint, yes, we are suffering globally from a, a pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, we are suffering uh, here, particularly in the United States, from division. Uh, we're suffering all over where we have misused uh, God's earth and have polluted the waters and have polluted the air and have taken and, and, and not cared for God's creation as well as ourselves, our brothers and sisters, as, as we ought. Uh, it's a scalable, scalable from uh, a world view, a country view, a city view, a church view, as well as an individual view. We want to focus in on our individual view of wilderness crying, how we, like John the Baptist, ought to have a cry that will give the rest of God's creation a glimpse, if not a view of the coming of Christ, the physical coming of Christ into our lives that makes tangible sense, that makes tangible reasoning, that touches us in physical ways in terms of our senses by sight and by hearing and, and by tasting and touching. Uh, uh, we, we, we want to prepare the way for Christ to come, not only into our hearts, but into the hearts of everyone else. And it takes us being in the wilderness hmm, in order to have a good cry. Hmm? Uh, John the Baptist, a relative uh, of Jesus, leapt in Elizabeth's womb when Mary, the mother of Jesus, came to Elizabeth 
informing her of her pregnancy, uh, John the Baptist, now in, now six months in uh, Elizabeth's womb, jumped for joy. Hmm? However, this John the Baptist uh, led a very aesthetic life in that he shone the city. He shone being around those trappings of this world. And he dwelt in the wilderness. He, 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 he attuned himself. He identified himself, as Katie uh, Dawson would say, with the wilderness he found himself in, remote from all of the trappings of this world, all of the uh, humanism of this world, all of the materialism of this world. And then, and only then, when he was in the wilderness, he came forth from that crying out to prepare the way of God. Hmm? It's something about the wilderness. There's something about the wilderness where when we really do attune ourselves to wherever we are in the wildernesses of our lives, that we can then have an authentic good cry. As long as we are just smoothing over, just trying to go through life and all of the circumstances in life and don't pause to attune ourselves, identify exactly what's going on with us, we will not have a good cry. Hmm? It is out of the pain and suffering that we have in our wilderness experiences that we can have an authentic good cry that we reverberate to all of the rest of God's creation. It is real when we have a good cry in the wildernesses of our lives. Huh? I may not know exactly how you may feel hmm, when you have suffered a loss. I can have some empathy. I can have some idea. But unless I go through that, particular wilderness for myself, hmm? I cannot have an authentic good cry. Hmm? Those who have gone through loss, those who have gone through disappointment, go, those who have gone through tragedy, those who have gone through whatever they have gone through, it is real when we cry out about that. Hmm? Hmm? It could be tears of joy, yes it could. It could be tears of sadness, yes, yes, but it's out of our soul because we have experienced that wilderness for ourselves. We have attuned ourselves, we have identified our wilderness, and it is hmm, a place where we can gain the authenticity that we are to have hmm, about our crying out, about our testimony, about our helping someone when it's born out of what we have experienced. Hmm? Whereas we have a good cry. Hmm. Whereas we can then out of the depths of our heart, out of our soul, put forth an authentic witness. Hmm? That, that, that many times when we're just going through life and how life can deal uh, so many curves, like it has done this year of COVID. On top of everything else that we are go, would go through in, in a year's time, we're going through uh, a very stressful, a very fearful, a very disheartening time on top of all the stuff that we do. And, 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 and we try to soak it in, in such a way that it will not cause us further depression, further anxiety. We try to cope. We try to say, well, the Lord will make a way. The Lord is good to us. We, 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 we go through it that I can make it. And, and we, we, we try to encourage ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. But unless we stop and pause and really cry out, huh? We cannot find the relief. We cannot give the authentic witness to the squirrels or to the tree 
or to whomever we may cry out to, it's not authentic. It's not a good cry. It does not really help us fully as we could. I would submit to you that until we have a good cry about wherever we are in life, then we're missing the fullness of the coming of the Lord. Unless we get to a point where we cry out that I'm hurting, that we cry out that I'm lonely, that we cry out that we hate this COVID, do we cry out? that nothing seems right in my life. When we cry out that I'm on my last dime, when we cry out that it's not a good cry. It, 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 it may shake a few people, but does it really shake you? Does it shape you into a pathway that Jesus can come in and touch where you really hurt? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, where, 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 you, where you cry out with tears, where you cry out of the depths of your soul. Lord, I'm heading here. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of not having. I am tired. I hate what's going on here. I need you right now because I am just drowning here. When we cry out from the depths of our soul, Mm -hmm. We prepare a straight path for Christ to come into our hearts. Huh? We've gotten rid of all the other stuff of, of this is what a Christian is supposed to say and this is how we ought to do it. Some, some, some systematic way of, of bowing down and all. Now I'm here in the wilderness and I am tired. I am lonely. I am sad. I can't see my way. I cry out. The God who knows all about me. He knows exactly when I've reached that point of a good cry, of a good cry. I don't know if uh, Sister Ramirez uh, remembers this or not. This is about five years, maybe we were at uh, the district meeting for the United Methodist Women. And we were talking about, uh, as, as one of the guest speakers there, about a about empty cries. Remember that, Sister Ramirez? This was taken out of Job. Whereas there are cries and there are empty cries. Particularly when a parent hears a newborn baby cry. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take your time when the, the, the child is having this ah, 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 type of cry. But you get in a hurry when you recognize an urgent cry. And it's not just an empty cry, it is a good cry. Ah! Ah! You just run to that child because that child, within that child's self, expressing with all of that child's self, I need you. I need you. And I'm having a good cry. I you recall about mm, maybe seven years ago uh, when this church was going through a series of perhaps a uh, funeral or two a month uh, and, and, and how we were taking it all in. And it wasn't until I could get away to go to Galveston, uh, along with the waves out there, along with the seagulls out there, that I had a good cry. I had a good cry and I felt the release of it all. I, I, I allowed a straight path for Christ to come into my life and give me the relief that I needed. Yes, a good cry. When we cry out publicly, and, and that public that public can be, yes, here in the congregation, but that public could be somewhere out there in the meadows where we can sing or we can crowd to the oh, yeah, beach and we can let i always talk about the squirrel and, and things like that for the squirrels to hear me uh, as such. when you need them back. Are, oh you have to have them for a certain day okay thank you thank you thank you all right all right all right we're here and let's get this back on but it's a cry. It is a cry that is authentic. 
It's a cry that we can signal to the world on Christ and the coming of Christ and how Christ has impacted us. Hmm? That the animals that we are supposed to care about gives us examples on how we may go about having a good cry, a public cry, a cry where others will be pointed towards the coming of the Lord. Yes, yes. I can remember uh, when I was in grade school, maybe the fourth or fifth grade, uh, there was this school operetta, as they call them, school play. And uh, out of all the characters that I could have played, uh, the teacher um, chose me to be the rooster, huh? the rooster. And at that time, uh, I thought, mm, okay, that's all I have to do is do the cock a doodle do you know, as such. And the costume cost, uh, at that time, around 20 or $30. And, and, and my dad, being a construction worker, and back in those times, money was kind of, <laughs> you're going to put on this costume that costs $30 and all you're going to do is crow. <laughs> he wasn't too keen on that. Huh? And, 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 and uh, I remember uh, there on stage thinking about all this, with this big deal over my head and this scarecrow on the side of me. And, and all I was doing is going, <laughs> I needed to do that about three times and that was it you know for 25 dollars costume that's it and things like that but now i think about that and the rooster hmm, cries out every morning if he's a good rooster <laughs> about the coming of the sun over god's horizon and, and, and he leads the rest of the world, huh? preparing the rest of the world that would listen to that rooster, or would hear that rooster about the coming of God's goodness, about the coming of God's day in our lives. And he cries out, huh? even as the beams of sun just barely comes over the horizon, that rooster cries out, He cries out, God's day is coming. God's day is coming. Prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, prepare you, your agenda for the coming of the Lord. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, yes. The animals gives us an example on how we should meet God today by proclaiming all of God's goodness to whomever we can out of the wildernesses of our lives. As the wolf would look at the moon, yes, and give a howl to the moon. All of creation is showing us how we ought to be crying out in the wildernesses of our lives. And when we do, when we have that good cry, we can join in with all of God's creation and said, God is here. God is coming. God is here. God is coming. God is here. God is coming. Every day God is here and God is coming. Every day God is here. Uh, 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 to the rising of the sun, to the going down of the sun, when the moon comes out, oh, we join in with all of God's creation crying out in the wilderness of our lives. Prepare ye the way of our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen.
church say amen. amen let us say amen again let us now prepare for our holy communion it's found on page uh, 13 of our united methodist hymnal <clears throat> and we're going to allow for those who are not with us here in the church or church grounds uh, to get your elements together as we prepare to receive God's Holy Communion together. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks uh, to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good thing and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to our God. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Yes, oh God, we are directed to give thanks by uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, to give thanks to God in all circumstances, for it is God's desire for us through Christ Jesus, amen. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your holy name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit of death. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, to the father, broke the bread, gave it to 
his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to the father, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ did this as he instituted what we now call the Holy Communion or the Eucharist for us to remember, not just a mental recalling of something that has happened in the past, but every time we do so, it happens again and again and again for us as oft as we do it. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering uh, for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is given, almighty Father, now and forever, amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Everyone here has uh, has uh, separate communion cups, and uh, we figured out a way how to get the wafer out. Okay, amen, amen. All right, amen, amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take and eat. Amen, amen. Mm. Mm. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, spilled on Calvary's cross for you and for me. Take and drink. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful, we are grateful, O oh God, that we have been at your table where we find all that we need, the nourishment uh, by the bread and, and by the wine, O oh God. It symbolizes your body and, and, and your blood that we, O oh God, will receive this nourishment for our Christian journey ahead of us. We're so thankful and grateful for all of your church gathered here. And we pray your special blessings on each and every one of us. As we have dined, we have fellowship at your table. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, we have, uh, as part of our announcements, uh, we want to look at uh, what we will have this afternoon, as well as the remainder of this week. And then I believe we'll have the Pachika uh, sisters come for a special presentation. Amen. Amen. So just hang there with us. Uh, I don't know whether the Cowboys play or not. No, nah, they don't. Oh, well, okay. They haven't been playing anyway. But anyway, <laughs> amen. This, <laughs> this afternoon, this afternoon. Oh goodness, we're still recording. Let me uh, let, let, let me stop the recording. <laughs>